Alright, so this is the third gas law's note. And we're looking in the lower left hand corner of the notes and we're looking at Gay Lussac's law. So, Gay Lussac's law. Again, this is all relating to different variables typically. So, Gay Lussac's law. Oh, look, you can color in Gay Lussac's. You guys take a second and color in Gay Lussac's. That's what those little bubble letters are for. Gay Lussac's. <clears throat> okay, so he relates pressure and temperature. Now, I don't think that you're going to have to memorize, oh, well, this one, Gay-Lussac was pressure and temperature or anything like that, but you will, um, they'll bring that up, and they'll say Gay-Lussac's uh, law or something along those lines. So it's not that you have to memorize it, it's just that you don't need to be freaked out when you see it, when they refer to it that way. So in this case, number of moles and volume are constant. And the equation looks like P1 over T1 equals P2 over T2. Really, again, just pressure and temperature. So a lot of these are not just deep, dark things that we're discussing at all. It's just saying, hey, when they did their experiments, when they figured out, this guy figured out the relationship between pressure and temperature. So if you look at your PTV card, that means volume is constant. As the pressure goes up, so does the temperature. So as pressure goes up, so does temperature. As temperature goes down, so does pressure. Yeah? So you just hold one of them constant, and it does that. And then the next one is Graham's Law. And Graham's Law is pretty interesting. This is for um, talking about how fast gas molecules move. So this relates the speed of gas diffusion to its molar mass. Okay. You should know a great, simple definition for diffusion. Diffusion, I don't care what science class you're in, diffusion is the movement of molecules from an area of greater concentration to an area of lesser concentration. That should be stuck in your brain. So diffusion, movement of molecules from greater concentration to lesser concentration. Always, 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 always. You need to know that word. Movement of molecules from an area greater concentration. This naturally happens. It's going to happen on its own no matter what. So if some little girl in the back of the room is wanting to paint her fingernails, hiding it from the teacher, she opens that bottle of fingernail polish and pretty much, pretty quickly, everyone knows she's painting her nails, don't they? Because what happens to the smell? Yeah, it travels. The molecules of the fingernail polish are moving from an area, they're gaseous, they're volatile, change into a gas. They move from an area of greater concentration in the bottle and they spread out to an area, an area of lesser concentration in the bottle. <clears throat> so Graham's Law is talking about, okay, we have big molecules, we have small molecules, which ones are going to diffuse faster? And then he takes it a step farther. He relates the speed of gas to diffusion and effusion which I don't know why they love this word, but they love to put this on here. Effusion is diffusion through a small hole. <clears throat> so it's diffusion through a small hole. So think of a balloon, it's got a pinhole in it. So you've, I blow the balloon up, obviously it's got carbon dioxide gas, I know it's got nitrogen, I know it's got some oxygen in there. If we just limit it to those three, which molecules are going to come out first? The ones that move the fastest, right? Smaller molecules move faster. Smaller gases, and we're talking about, notice it's molar mass, right? 
So if they weigh less, they move faster. The bigger ones are slow and lumbering. Okay, think about this a minute. Now stay with me on this. We talk about, right now, if we talk about the temperature in this room, let's say it's, it's 71. That's going to be Fahrenheit, but, you know, let's pretend that that's Celsius, somewhere around 23 degrees Celsius, okay? What that means is that's an average temperature, and we can relate the temperature to the speed of the molecules, right? Because that's what it is. If we heat them up, don't the molecules go faster? Yeah? Okay, so when we talk about temperature, we're really talking about the speed of gases. You see the link between those two? Okay, not all the gases are moving the same speed because when we talk about that temperature and the speed, we're really focused on kinetic energy. We're going to talk about kinetic energy in, here just, in just a minute. So the kinetic energy is talking about a very specific equation. Kinetic energy equals one-half times the mass times the velocity squared, right? Ke equals one-half mv squared. You've heard that before, okay? So if they're all the same temperature, the same average temperature, that means they all have the same average kinetic energy. That doesn't mean they're all moving the same speed. Are you guys with me on this? Okay, let me say that again. If they all have the same temperature, that means they have the same average kinetic energy. So when you do the equation, Ke equals one-half mv squared, Ke is the same for all of these different gases. Do they all have the same mass? Is the helium, is the hydrogen gas the same mass as the nitrogen gas? No. Since they don't have the same mass, in order to keep that, that Ke the same, what they really vary in is their speed, the velocity, v. So let me look at it, let me show you this way. If I can find another blank piece of paper. So we have this equation, kinetic energy is equal to one-half mv squared, right? <clears throat> If they're at the same temperature, like right in this room, all the gases are at the same average, temp they're at the same temperature, so they're at the same average kinetic energy. So this number stays the same for all the gases. So this has to stay the same. If they don't weigh the same, hydrogen is a lot less than nitrogen, then the only way to keep this number the same is to change this one, right? If this number goes down, what does this number have to do? It has to go up, right? So the smaller gases are going to have to move faster to maintain the same average kinetic energy. Yes? So it's not just a matter of you saying, oh, yeah, that makes sense. I can think about it that way. You can prove it with an equation. So when you look at this equation, you can say, I know that these smaller gases are going to move faster because if they are at the same temperature, they have the same average kinetic energy. If the masses are smaller, you have to have that volume increased so that the kinetic energy stays the same. Are you with me on that? Do you see that? I, I think it's a pretty obvious one that it makes sense to me, but sometimes, you know, when you're hearing it for the first time, it might not be something that makes a lot of sense to you. You may need to listen to that if you, um, this is a good way for you to, I know you don't want to listen to the whole video all over again, but you can flip through these when you get online on these, and you can say, well, where was that part where she talked about the kinetic energy? And that's a good thing to listen to again. Okay, we have one more piece. Okay, we have two more pieces, and then I'm going to pause it. I'm going to stop this video, too. Questions? No? Nope. Yes. It works for gases only. And the reason it can work for gases is because we can vary the pressure and the volume, and so it, it allows them free movement when they do this. Yeah, it's not going to work for the solids and stuff. Yeah, gases have their own rules. I mean, they do their own kind of thing here. The most useful thing that you're going to have right here is the ideal gas law. You're going to use the hound out of this one. This is hugely important. Okay, so there are two laws that we use, two equations, two big equations that we use when we talk about gases, the ideal gas law and the combined gas law. Totally, you don't use them in the same situation. The ideal gas law is PV equals NRT. Pervnert. If you talk about pervnert, that's PV equals NRT. So PV equals NRT. The combined gas law is P1V1, and I'm going to put T2 and N2, equals P2V2 
T1, N1. This combined gas law is when you have the same exact gas, but you mess with something and you change something about it. There's no chemical reaction. There's no nothing at all. You have a gas. You're messing with either the volume, the pressure, the temperature, the number of moles. That's all you're doing. Okay. Here on the ideal gas law, you can use this when you have a chemical reaction. Okay. So you've gone through this chemical reaction. How many moles of gases do you have now? And they'll tell you pressures and volumes and temperatures, and you have to determine number of moles from that. Okay. So. This follows all five parts of the kinetic molecular theory. And I'm going to abbreviate that KMT, and we're going to take notes on that in just, a, in just a little bit so you'll know what that is. So it follows all the parts of the KMT. What you need to know and what they'll ask you about is it's called the ideal gas law. In reality, though, is anything ideal, is anything perfect? So there are no true ideal gases. So we look for the ones that are most ideal and least ideal. So the most ideal gases, and they will ask you about this. Can you go flip that, please? They'll ask you about this. The most ideal gases. They are at low pressure, high temperature, and they are nonpolar. Okay, what that means is they are most gas like. They're not close to coming back down and turning into a liquid. That's the big deal. The closer they are to turning into a liquid, the more non ideal they are. So what that means is if they're at low pressure, they're spread out. Molecules are all spread out, right? That's like a gas. If they're at high temperatures, the molecules, again, they tend to be spread out. They're moving fast. And if they're nonpolar, there's no attractions between them. The least ideal, and they will ask you some questions about this, like which one is more ideal? The least ideal will be just the opposite of that. High pressure, where they cram them close together, right? If they're closer together, they're going to be more like a liquid, yes? Closer to turning back to a liquid. So high pressure, low temperature means you're cooling them down. And polar means that they're attracted to each other. There are some attractions there. So the closer the gas is to condensing, the less ideal it is. So the closer it is to condensing, the less ideal it is. So we'll work the ideal gas laws, and really all it is is plugging numbers into an equation. But the big key here is you have to be able to explain, is this gas more ideal or is this one? So you have to be able to, to figure that out. And so when you talk about the ideal gas law, it's one gas. You're not changing. You don't have different temperatures. You don't have different pressures or anything like that. It's one gas with one set of variables. When you come over here to the combined gas law, you know that you're going to use the combined gas law because you're going to have two pressures or two temperatures or two volumes, things like that. So it's one gas that you're messing with. You're altering some factors about it. Okay? That's the difference. So. Two pressures, two volumes, two temperatures, that's the, that's the combined gas law. You've got one of everything, that's when you're doing the ideal gas law. Okay? Let's take a break. <laughs>